Electrolytic cells use an external power supply to force a non-spontaneous redox reaction to occur. To get an idea of what an electrolytic cell in general is, we start by looking at two half reactions and the overall redox reaction we get by adding them. We'll start with the half reaction we get by reversing the reduction of chlorine on the table to get the oxidation of chloride ions. Notice because we reversed the equation, the sign on the E0 is switched from positive to negative. Next, we'll add the half reaction for the reduction of zinc ions, the way it is on the table, with an E0 value of negative 0.76 volts. We'll add these two half reactions to get the overall redox equation. Notice the electrons gained by the zinc ion are equal to the electrons lost by the chloride ions. Therefore, electrons can be cancelled before adding the two half reactions. On the left side, we have Zn2 plus plus 2Cl minus. And on the right side, we have Zn solid plus Cl2 gas. To get the E0 value for the overall redox equation, we add negative 1.36 volts and negative 0.76 volts to give us negative 2.12 volts. A negative E0 value for the overall redox reaction means that this redox reaction is a non spontaneous reaction as written. So that means if we simply mixed Zn2 plus and Cl minus, we would not get solid zinc and chlorine gas. But we can force this reaction to occur using a process called electrolysis. Electrolysis uses an external power supply or battery to force a non spontaneous redox reaction to occur. Electrolysis takes place in an electrolytic cell. We'll look at the simplest type of electrolytic cell. This is what we call a type 1 electrolytic cell. We'll start off with two inert carbon electrodes in a single container. Then we add a direct current power supply and wires. Before the power supply is connected, the electrodes are both neutral. Using simplified symbols, we'll represent a few protons by plus signs and a few electrons as E's with a negative charge. Because they are neutral, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. When we close the switch and connect the power supply, it takes electrons from the electrode attached to the positive terminal and pumps them onto the electrode attached to the negative terminal. The electrode on the left now has a deficiency of electrons, giving it a net positive charge and the electrode on the right now has an excess of electrons, giving it a net negative charge. In an electrolytic cell, the electrode attached to the positive terminal of the power supply is called the anode, and the electrode attached to the negative terminal of the power supply is called the cathode. Just remember A plus for anode and C minus for cathode. Remember this only works for an electrolytic cell, not an electrochemical cell. We'll redistribute the electrons and stop showing the protons for simplicity. We'll add some molten zinc chloride to the container. A molten salt like zinc chloride consists of ions that are in constant random motion. Now we'll focus on one zinc ion and two chloride ions. The positive zinc ions will be attracted to the negative cathode, while the negative chloride ions will be attracted to the positive anode. Now we'll concentrate on the cathode and see what happens there. The zinc ion will gain two electrons from the cathode and turn into a zinc atom. The equation for what just happens is Zn2 plus plus 2 electrons gives zinc solid. 
This is an example of reduction. So we see that reduction of the cation Zn2 plus occurs at the cathode. Now we'll have a look at the anode and see what happens. Each chloride ion will lose one electron and change into a chlorine atom. The two chlorine atoms then join to form a molecule of Cl2, or chlorine gas. The process taking place on the anode can be summarized by the equation 2Cl- gives Cl2 gas plus 2 electrons. The process of chloride ions losing electrons is called oxidation. And we see that oxidation of chloride ions to chlorine takes place at the anode. So again, zinc ions are reduced at the cathode to form zinc atoms. And chloride ions are oxidized at the anode to form chlorine gas, Cl2. So as the cell operates, we can visualize zinc metal growing on the surface of the cathode and bubbles of chlorine gas forming on the anode. So we can say that the product at the anode is chlorine gas, and the product at the cathode is zinc metal. Now that we've seen how this cell works, we'll show you a process you can use for any questions involving the electrolysis of a molten salt. We'll use our example here of molten zinc chloride. Molten salts always consist of mobile positive and negative ions. So we write the dissociation equation for the salt forming liquid ions. We have ZnCl2 liquid forms Zn2 plus liquid and 2Cl minus liquid. We write C minus for the cathode underneath the positive ion. The positive ions are attracted to the negative cathode. And we write A plus for anode underneath the negative ions. The negative ions are attracted to the positive anode. Reduction of Zn2 plus ions occurs at the cathode. Its half reaction is Zn2 plus plus 2 electrons gives Zn solid. And the product at the cathode is zinc solid. Oxidation of Cl- ions occurs at the anode. Its half reaction is 2Cl- gives Cl2 gas plus 2 electrons. And the product at the anode is chlorine gas, Cl2. We get the equation for the overall redox reaction by adding up the two half reactions. It is Zn2 plus plus 2Cl minus gives Zn solid plus Cl2 gas. Going through this process should greatly help you with any questions you get involving the electrolysis of molten salt, or what we call type 1 electrolytic cells. Thank you.